Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at pyramids of numbers, biomass, energy, and then we'll finish with a summary. So as we've seen before, food chains are one way of illustrating which organism consumes which other organisms in an ecosystem. So we saw how, for example, grass, as a producer, gets consumed by the rabbit, which gets consumed by the wild cats, which can be consumed by lions. So it's basically di dictating where the energy can go from one organism into another. Another way of illustrating how components in an ecosystem interact is by using a pyramid of numbers. So a pyramid of numbers is an illustration of how many organisms there are at each trophic level in a food chain. So let's consider this diagram here. The clover can be eaten by the snail, which can be eaten by the thrush, which can be eaten by the sparrowhawk. So each of these is a trophic level. And what we tend to see are numbers of particular organisms in this trophic level. If you consider this is all happening in a field, then the number of clovers individually is going to be quite high. So there's a high number of clovers. There will probably be less numbers of snails than there are clovers, so we see a smaller block of numbers of snails. And at each level that we go up the food chain, there tends to be reduced numbers. So you're unlikely to see as many sparrowhawks and thrushes as you are for every clover individual. So in most food chains that you see, the number of organisms at each trophic level decreases, giving a pyramid shape of numbers as a pyramid shape. So what we see here is we can see this general pyramid shape where there are more at the bottom and less at the top. However, pyramids of numbers don't really accurately reflect what is happening in an ecosystem. Because in this ecosystem, many, many, many caterpillars can feed on one single oak tree. So even though we've gone up a level in the food chain, we've actually gone up in numbers too, which is unusual. So having a particular pyramid doesn't represent the real situation in an ecosystem. So for example, one tree might support thousands of aphids, and although a tree is far larger than all the aphids, this isn't shown on the pyramid. So because it only considers numbers, this isn't an accurate representation of what's really going on. One oak tree is far larger and massive compared to thousands of caterpillars or aphids. So using numbers alone isn't enough. Pyramids of biomass are a different way of illustrating which organism consumes what other organisms in an ecosystem. So a pyramid of biomass this time shows the amount of dry biomass at each trophic level in a food chain. So instead of just looking at numbers, we're looking at biomass, which refers to the mass of organic material in a particular group of organisms. So this is better now because even though we may have one oak tree and thousands of caterpillars, the oak tree has a far greater biomass than the caterpillars overall. So this more accurately shows that biomass is being consumed at each level and that there's less and less at each level as we go along. The reason we use dry biomass is because it's more accurate than using wet biomass. Because wet biomass will be affected by water uptake and loss, whereas dry mass is a particularly constant figure. For example, a plant can uptake water from its roots, and it can also lose water in transpiration. Based on what time of day and how the plant is, the biomass is going to vary. So taking it at different times might affect the results. It's more accurate to take it as a dry biomass every time for a plant and an animal to make it fairer and more accurate. Using biomass at each trophic level shows how much of each organism there is collectively to eat, as opposed to how many there are. So this time we can see at the bottom level, if this was a tree, showing that there's only one in number doesn't really give us much of a picture of the food chain. Showing us that there's a large biomass, however, shows us that there's lots of food that can be eaten by the aphids and caterpillars to go to the next level. However, even pyramids of biomass still have disadvantages. First of all, calculating dry biomass is difficult and time consuming because you have to take samples and get rid of all the water content in the samples. So we have to go through an extensive procedure of water evaporation without completely destroying the organism. Also, the biomass pyramids only show data at one point in time because we have to kill the organisms and take their water. So in a sample, for example, a sample of pond water, 
we only have the amount of phytoplankton and zooplankton at one particular time. So actually the populations might vary more than this. So we might take one sample from a pond, which happens to have more of one than the other, but the pond overall may have actually the reverse relationship. Finally, we can also have pyramids of energy. So a way of showing which organism consumes what other organisms in an ecosystem is the pyramid of energy. So a pyramid of energy represents the total energy store of the organisms at each trophic level in a food chain. So this, it's the amount of energy which is available for the next level. So for example, there's high energy in the first level, and then of course the next level there'll be less energy and less and less. So it's showing us what energy is available, not just biomass. Because some of the biomass isn't able to be eaten, or it may not be very high in energy. But energy shows us exactly how much energy can be passed on. Every organism at each trophic level has a particular form of a store of energy in their body. For example, fat stores in animals. So fat stores, for example, of those in bears, store fat which can be eaten by other animals and used as energy. And if the other animals use this as energy, then this is obviously a store of energy. Plants store energy in their bodies as well. What you tend to see with these pyramids is that at each trophic level, energy is lost from the organism in one way or another, which the other pyramids do not account for. So energy loss happens at every level. So even if you have a group of organisms in a trophic level eating another group of organisms, which have lots of energy, it's never a case where all of that energy passes on. There is always an energy loss. For example, some of it is lost in urine or waste products. Some is lost in regulating the body's temperature. Some food from the previous trophic level goes uneaten. Some of the food is indigestible. And sometimes for plants, the rate of photosynthesis may be limited. So what this means is even if the caterpillars ate the entire tree or oak tree, then maintaining the temperature and different parts of the tree which they can't eat keep some of the energy and that energy is therefore lost to the environment and at the next level which is the caterpillar level there will be less energy overall. But the illustration most accurately shows how energy in an ecosystem moves rather than where it goes. So you can see the energy moves on to each next level but at each level there is some loss to the environment from the, through various processes that we just went through. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.